Hello there everyone, today we're gonna tie this. This is a jig shanked woolly bugger. And uh, it's made on these uh, these pretty cool, pretty awesome uh, uh, shanks from uh, from uh, from spawn flyfish. Um, and uh, and this is uh, this is an articulated fly. So basically, it has two parts. It has a shank, and then it has a hook. And uh, and because of this, uh, because of the angle of uh, of the uh, of the. Uh, of the shank here, when this sits on the bottom, if, if, if you're fishing in shallow water or you're fishing deep, then it will rest like this and then the hook will be up here. So you won't get as many snags and also the, the articulation here makes this really, really vibrant and lively and, and makes the tail kick a lot out there. So a very, very cool way of tying a, a pretty nice streamer. Uh, the articulation here is, is really, really cool. So stay tuned and uh, watch the video on how to do this. Hello, as I said, here is the, the fly and uh, now we're going to tie this. Um, it's, a, it's an articulated fly and that means we uh, first tie on a hook and then we add the hook to, uh, to a shank. Um, and uh, so, so it's, it's a fly that's tied in, in two different uh, sections. The first thing we need is, is of course the hook here. And, uh, and basically uh, I just make a small woolly bugger on this hook. Take my thread here and this is a Vivus GSP thread all the way down to the hook bent. This is a, uh, the hook is a Chemco 783 um, and it's a really cool hook for, for something like this because it's very very strong, very durable, so it, it, this can definitely withstand both uh, really big trout and salmon and, and rough water and stuff like that and, uh, and also it has a very wide gape and a really really nice tip. So, so this Chemco hook is, is a really cool hook and I, I, I found myself using this more and more for for all sorts of flies and, and it's even a good uh, hook for, for a single hook for, uh, for tube flies. Okay, uh, enough, of, uh, enough about all that. Now um, what we need is, is we need a, a tail for this, uh, for this uh, thing here. And, uh, and the, the thing I'm gonna need is I, I'm gonna need a marabou plume. This one actually looked quite good. So I'm gonna take this and then I'm gonna take these two fingers here. I'm gonna make them into kind of a clamp. Then I'm going to clamp on the marabou with the two fingers so that I have one of the sides of the marabou. And then I'm going to cut all along the, uh, the marabou feather stem here. As you can see, now I've cut off uh, the entire bottom part of, uh, of the feather here. And I have all the feathers in between my fingers. And then I can just easily add these together to give me a nice tail. A nice voluminous tail. There we go. And I think the tail size here is, is fairly fine. I'm going to cut off this list over marabou so it kind of aligns with the eye. So I'll get an even thick body all the, almost all the way up to the eye. There we go. Then we're gonna take a, a hackle, and for this uh, this part here uh, in, in the the back part of the fly, I'm gonna take a, 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 a fairly small hackle. <coughs> this is a black rooster hackle, um, because I want this fly to taper, and I want this tail part of the fly to be uh, smaller and thinner than the rest. Basically, tie this down. And there we go, and. Um, like so and uh, then I need some dubbing and for this I'm gonna use some really really cool uh, looking uh, spawn UV collection this is fluorescent orange or UV orange and black and then I'm gonna use some ripple ice fiber in uh, in uh, pearl red hue um, I'm gonna mix these two and uh, and the way I do this this is mixed already is simply just to pull it apart I'm gonna mix them for then uh, for I'm gonna show you um, I take a bundle of the uh, the spawn dubbing here, the orange and uh, and uh, black, and then I take a sm smaller amount of uh, of this ripple ice dubbing. And then I'm gonna mix these two together by pulling them apart, turning it over, pulling them apart, turning it over, and so on and so forth. About enough times until you you think that that your dubbing now has been decently uh, decently uh, mixed. 
For for this uh, this first section, I'm not going to do a dubbing loop, but I'm going to do that for the second section. So basically, I'm just going to take some of the dubbing here and just mash it on there. Like this. Perfect. And then we're ready to go. It was a bit too much dubbing, but that's okay. I'm gonna turn the hackle. <laughs> I see now that I actually forgotten some flesh in the tail. It's not that important, but but if you want, you can add a few strands of uh, of crystal flesh or ascent flesh or uh, or mirror flesh, uh, whatever you have around to to the tail. Just about four or five strands. It's not going to be that crucial, but um, I have it on the other ones, and and I like it. But you know, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to redo it now. It's an option. You choose if you want to do it. This way it makes it a bit more stealthy. There's a few of the strands here that is a bit long, so I'm just I'm not going to cut them with the scissor, but basically just rip them off with uh, with my fingers. And basically now the the only thing left is is to add the rubber legs. And these are barred round rubber legs in uh, in in orange. And they look nice on any fly. Um, and uh, then I take one of these and cut it into half like so. So now I have my rubber leg and I'm going to add it to the thread and then hold it between my thumb and index finger and this way I can manipulate it exactly in place where I want it. I want mine there. A bit longer and if I want it longer I simply just pull on it. Like that. Then I take this on the other side. The same way, add it to the thread. I do this with tinsel with all sorts of stuff. This is a really, really neat trick. Tighten, pull on the uh, pull on the uh, the rubber legs here, so it makes it easier to to. And as you can see, they're sticking out here. They will stick out into the current and make a lot of a lot of movement and a lot of bouncing around and stuff like that. You can see how easy they are. They are moving now. Then I do a whip finish. And use some sabagap for this one or, or varnish. I don't have either just here, but uh, that's that's a, that's a good idea. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the shank here, and these are the uh, the spawn jig shanks, um, uh, and these are the 60 degrees ones. I really really like those. I'm gonna show you what they look like in the in the vise now. So basically you have a shank here that has an angle to it and that makes it perfect for using a, a tungsten bead to make this uh, have a really nice jigging effect. Um, the thing we need to do now is basically just take a pair of pliers and just pull out the shank here a little. This is also an excellent shank for making all kinds of uh, intruder flies, and uh, and I mean any intruder fly, at least in places where you're allowed to uh, to add weight to the flies. This is is a really really good way of uh, of adapting some of your proven intruder patterns, because this uh, this the shank has a lot of weight. Um, basically, this is a slotted shank, and that's very important. And you put it through with the uh, the slotted section first. Otherwise, it it you you can't do this wrong because if you do it wrong, then it won't uh, it won't go on there. And basically, now I have my shank, I have my bead, and now I need to add the hook. And it's very crucial for the fly to work as intended that the hook is pointing upwards because if it's pointing downwards, you will have um, a harder time of actually having this hook and not catching the bottom. So basically, your your setup is like this. The hook needs to point upwards. And you uh, you attach the shank to uh, in the vise. 
Then I close the shank with tying thread, so it's important that you have a fairly strong, fairly durable tying thread. As I said, this is the Vivo's uh, 50 Dinya. I, I use that for quite a lot of different things and it really, really, it performs just outstanding. Uh, the Vivo's products is, is yeah, by far my favorite uh, types of, uh, of thread. And then in order to cover up the gap here, I take a bundle of, of this dubbing mix I made from the uh, Ribble Eyes and the uh, and the uh, the spawn dubbing and then basically I make a bundle here and I try to get it all the way around the hook so the f all the way around the shank so the first two turns I'm gonna make are gonna be fairly loose and then I'm gonna apply some pressure you could use a hack hole you could make a hack hole or or even use marabou again here or, or something like that but um, I find that this dubbing is, is the fastest and the easiest way and then I take the, the dubbing that was pointing forward I fold it back to give the to give then I get the double amount of dubbing easily. So there you go and as you can see now the uh, the, uh, the 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 joint the uh, the section that of the fly that was that was linked together is now covered so it, it's not as much for the fish as it is as it is for you know Instagram and the profile picture of of this YouTube video and stuff like that but it just makes your fly looks better. Basically that's it. Then I'm going to take another black hack hole and I'm going to take a fairly larger one because as I said I want this to taper. This is probably about double length of the first one. And this will give your fly a more rugged, a more uh, authentic look I think. Um, and again I tied this down in the tip um, so that it gradually becomes longer the, the, the more turns I make of this. And I tied it in so the, uh, the, 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 the side that faces upwards on the cape, the side that points upward from the cape, is pointing towards me. So when I turn this hack hole, all the, all the natural curve of the fibers will, will lean backwards. Like so. Then I'm going to make a dubbing loop. There we go. And then I'm going to move the thread all the way up here. And I'm going to hang my dubbing loop off to the side to prepare the dubbing for the dubbing loop. And basically, as I said, I want this to taper. So when, when, I, when I have the dubbing here, I, will, I would like, ideally, to have more and thicker dubbing uh, the further down you go. So this is going to be at the front of the dubbing loop. But as you can see, it's fairly there's fairly less material here than, than there is here in the bottom. And this will also help to taper the uh, the entire fly here. Like this. I'm going to take my dubbing reel. If you, uh, if you if you're if you're you're having trouble with your dubbing reel and and you know it's it's not it's not balanced properly and stuff like that this CF design one is just perfect it's completely smooth it works like a cha charm and it's it's probably well I have to say the second best dubbing reel in the world because the other one CF design does that is uh, with um, with the ball bearing that is the best one but but for for quick use and stuff like that then you this is just awesome I don't know if you can see, but you see, just com completely perfect, completely perfect. Then I spin my dubbing uh, loop and then basically I just turn this. And, uh, and one of the other reasons why it's important you don't have too much dubbing here is, is because of the, the, the joint, uh, the, the section of the shank that is uh, linked up, then when you go to, to, the, to the shank where there is only one wire, you will, you will have to have more dubbing to compensate for the uneven thickness of, between these two sections of, uh, of the fly here. Basically, I'm going to turn this all the way up to the shank. There we go. I'm going to secure the dubbing loop. Cut it away. Take my hackle. And turn this. You could apply some rip to this if if that that's turned the other way around or or that's turned from the front if you want this to be even more durable, but uh, the dubbing here will protect the hackle somewhat. And then basically I, oh shit. 
that's not how that was supposed to go. Oh, let me think fast here. Let me think fast. Is there any way I can save this in any way? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try to save this. So my hackle broke and I do not want to want to you know trash this flyer or start over so basically I just take my hackle plier and force the hackle down there we go but I don't think that there is enough hackle now so I'm gonna take uh, another hackle and then I'm just gonna fix things like this with this other hackle. So basically I tie down another hackle of the same length. And then I'm going to make two or three turns with that one in order to save my fly here. To give it a bit more bulk here in the front. There we go. So that was a quick fix and uh, saved on the, on the goal line or whatever you want to call it. There we go. And then I'm going to take the uh, two more rubber legs to give this even more uh, volume, more, more, more movement. Attach one there. And then take the other one. And attach then on the other side. There we go. Cut off the stumps. You can add more rubber legs if you like and stuff like that. And if you feel like you have a bit of a a head issue up here. I don't think it's a problem on, on this fly, but but uh, on one of the others I, I had experienced that there was a, a small gap that looked strange up here. You can simply take a little more dubbing and just make a small amount of dubbing up here to kind of cover up where you uh, where where you're, you tied down the um, the rubber legs fasten that and because of the dubbing and the uh, and the tungsten bead and, and stuff like that this is this is going to be hard to varnish but if you can get some you I, I should have I should have used some sabba gap on the thread uh, and and uh, with the whip finish but but here you have it this is a truly truly awesome awesome pattern and as I said because of uh, the way this is built it has an insane amount of movement it will bounce really really awesome uh, in the water and it will it will stand on the bottom so so basically if you don't have too much weed you have maybe uh, some um, if you have maybe some uh, some rock bottom or something like that then this fly will stand on the bottom like this and your hook will be free from uh, from touching the bottom and you can just jig it jig it jig it it looks freaking awesome in the water this fly is is perfect for perch it's perfect for for trout uh, as a trout streamer it's perfect for for sea trout and um, uh, and and basically any fish that that feeds on on food subjects like this you could probably even do this for for saltwater fishing for bonefish and stuff like that i think this this way of tying a bonefish fly would be pretty pretty awesome and um, and uh, and it's all due to the slotted tungsten bead here and the uh, and the uh, and the angle shank that makes this fly just look freaking awesome and uh, and because jig flies work so so well um but uh, up until now it, it, there's been a limit to how big you could make them because um because uh, the the jig hook f the the jigs uh, the the jig hooks um only came in a certain variety of different sizes uh, but now you can make really really big streamers really big uh, um, articulated flies like this so this is an awesome way to go 
to make jigging flies that fishes and balances perfectly and uh, and for steelhead and uh, and salmon as well this is going to be a killer so basically there you have it um, this is a jigged version of a, of a woolly bugger with rubber legs um, I'm going to start fishing upstream for salmon and sea trout in Denmark I've just joined another club with some really awesome water so uh, hopefully I'm gonna have a video about how to to fish this fly exactly and uh, and uh, and how well it works uh, later on, on on the YouTube channel as always you can find all the materials for this fly in my web shop it's called Nordic Anglers if you haven't done so already it would mean a lot to me if you would subscribe to the channel Oh, maybe the finishing touch for this would be to pull out uh, some of the dubbing here. And when you do this, uh, take care not to uh, to pull the uh, <laughs> the hackle <laughs> once again. But as I said, this this fly or this type of flies, you can vary it the colors in any way you like and stuff like that. But this type of fly or, or, or this pattern in particular, the black, I chose the black because, well, basically black is probably the best color of all times for flies like this uh, but you can you can you can vary that uh, as much as you like and you can you can incorporate this technique with the angled uh, the angled shank here for as i said intruder flies in general and basically there we have it the jig shanked tungsten beaded uh, woolly bugger with the rubber legs Thank you so much for watching and uh, take care and good luck out on the water.